Welcome back to Racing Boys. I'm Scott Trailer, live from the McCarthy Auto Group Studios here in Kansas City. You know, we've been doing this show for a long time. We've had a lot of great guests over the course of the last 17 years. One of my favorite, obviously, if not my favorite, up to this very moment, Chris Economaki. That tells you what kind of company this guy is in. Dave Despain joins us now, the host of the Dave Despain Show. Dave, how you doing, my friend? I'm I'm honored already to be included in the same sentence as Chris Economaki, who is my hero, my mentor, and one of my all-time favorite people. Um, you had mentioned that uh, you hadn't been to the Chili Bowl, and it, let me just say, first of all, kudos to the staff over at Lucas Oil Productions from AFTV at the production they put together. Obviously, we, we do the prelim up to when you guys go live here at Racing Boys with our pay-per-view broadcast, but rave reviews about the broadcast, Mav TV and yourself, your first time there. Your thoughts of the Chili Bowl Nationals, first experience? The building, obviously, is the first thing you notice. It's just dazzling in its size. And then once you get past that, the way the building lends itself to the activity from the trade show to the, mm-hmm. the track to pit area. Uh, and then just walking down the line, seeing all of these old friends, um, <laughs> many of them go back to the Thunder days, obviously on ESPN because of the, you know, the midget uh, connection. Mm-hmm. Racing is an expensive sport to televise. Well, um, and I say this not to blow smoke back at you, but I thought you guys did an excellent job at the Chili Bowl of give me what I want. You know, right. I, I'm sure there's no budget for 16 cameras, including <laughs> nine onboards, but give me what I want. Give me the basics. Give me the, you know, give me the meat of it. And that's exactly what the pay-per-view customer got for his or her, whatever it was, $99. Yeah. And that felt good to me at a number of different levels. Uh, number one, you know, my prediction 100 years ago that the internet was going to create that kind of opportunity uh, seems to have finally borne a little fruit. Um, but by the same token, part of my mind is saying, you know, if you look at what those guys did Monday through Saturday, whatever time we took over, and you look at what Mav did in the time that we did, and you look at what it cost to make it happen, the difference is breathtaking. Oh, no doubt. And so so the problem is, how do you make the economic model work to put a lot of grassroots racing on television as we've traditionally known it? Mm-hmm. That's a tough one. That's a very tough one. But what you guys are doing, I think, is pioneering because what happens is the grassroots fan is so appreciative that somebody cares enough to make the effort to give them the chili bowl and all those other things that you do. They're going to they're going to they're going to support it. They're going to watch it or listen to it. They're going to appreciate it, and it's going to do what we want, which is maintain and build their interest and capture new people and and all the rest of that. You but, mentioned. Uh, uh, Thunder, and I've got to go back because we have our young phenom now. You know, uh, Kyle Larson has been one of the guys that a lot of people are talking about right now as far as, you know, who's the greatest driver in the last 30 or 40 years. I grew up, I started going the races in 66. A.J. Foyt was my guy. There was nobody okay. that did it better than A.J. Foyt in my eyes. He could do it all and everything. And, and when I tell people, when they ask me, what do you think about Kyle Larson? I say, well, he's the best since Foyt. That's my opinion. Um, you were around in the Thunder days, Jeff Gordon. He was the young guy that came in, ruffled a lot of feathers with the young guys. Where would you compare Kyle Larson to a Foyt, uh, a Jeff Gordon, or is there any comparison? 